Hello YouTube, it's time for me to present to you yet another build of mine. Um, this time it's actually gonna be a very memeish build, and it was actually such a bad slash good meme that it already died. Um, so yeah, today I'm gonna show you the Emma Russell's Shield Burst Dervish. So first of all, let's take a look at the character here in Grim Tools. Um, as you can see, we are a Dervish, and this build is specifically, well, the idea behind this build was to use this weapon, which gives us zero cooldown on Amorastus Blade Burst, and also a shield, so that we have basically Amorastus Shield Burst, because Amorastus Blade Burst works in a way that it will always like use your uh, offhand to attack, unless you have like a 200 equipped. So in this case, we want to make the shield our like main damage source, basically. And for that we also chose um, the shield that has the highest flat acid damage. In this case it's the Oculant. And also it gives us 8% shield recovery time and 8% shield block chance to Pneumatic Burst. Which, well, kind of makes Pneumatic Burst at least a little bit useful for shield builds, right? Let's, let's watch this animation here, right? <laughs> Looks so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, let's, as always, talk about the skills first. We are a Nightblade and an Oathkeeper. Uh, Amorastal Blade Burst is our main ability, so we max it out to the hard cap, 26-16 here, 22-12 here. Um, also, Veil of Shadow, like this should be a soft cap on any Nightblade. Uh, Veil of Sh like Night's Chill, 10 out of 10 for the value, or you can also put more points here if you have some more points to spare. Um, Pneumatic Burst... Um, Again, has value points at either 6 out of 12 or 10 out of 12. Since we don't have like the highest attack speed with the shield, we are using those to also like increase attack speed a bit. So 10 out of 12 in this case. Um, Shadow Dance has very good value up to the soft cap, and it's also good after the soft cap for the A. Um, but in this case, we don't just don't have the points to like put more points on that. And uh, also one point in Elemental awakening, awakening. It's like always worth it for like one point in my opinion because you always get like a decent amount of elemental resistance depending on how many like plus skills you have. So like one point for 6% elemental resistance in this case, which is already good enough in my opinion. Um, same thing kind of for Phantasm Armor, right? One pointer here, 24 flat armor, 5% pierce resistance, freeze duration and petrified duration reduction as well. Pretty nice. Also some energy leech retaliation. So yeah, that's kind of help with your energy problems as well sometimes. Uh, Anatomy of Murder. <clears throat> now this one, um, that's basically not worth it to max out anymore, except on like bleeding and vitality builds, right? So you kind of always one point this for the five percent conning, five percent damage to humans in this case. Um, but yeah, more than one points are more than one point is usually not worth it on this anymore. Uh, Merciless Repertoire, though, since you're like a poison slash acid character, you just max this out. Do the max, and yeah, it's pretty good for that. Maybe. Uh, Ring of Steel um, is pretty much for any melee nightblade a like one point of that sword is worth it. Like uh, the weapon damage on this one makes it very strong even at only one point. So yeah, one point for 90% weapon damage and some pierce damage, which is like whatever, but it's okay. It's it's like some nice AOE, you know. So it's very nice to proc say, um, the Abomination Devotion, right? It's really good for that. Because, like, the CDR is kind of the same on both of those. Like, the scary recharge, right? Um, Circle of Slaughter as well, one-pointer, always good. Like, this one is a super good debuff, especially because of the fumble, right? You have 16% chance of fumble targets here um, to make enemy attacks fumble. Like, you can put more points here if you have, like, you, if you can spare them, right? But we don't really have more points here. Um, and also, one point in Blade Spirit. This is mostly uh, taken for, like, the points here in that Blade. The 10 points here, so that we have, like, well, decent stats, because we're kind of low in HP if we don't do that. Uh, and also, like, a one point in Blade Spirit is always good, because Blade Spirit, again, is very nice. Um, like, uh, well, it's not really a, an ability because it's like a player scout pet, right? But this player scout pet is really good at proc devotions for you. 
and you just have to like cast it once and it, it will like live forever, so it's pretty nice for devo proking devotions. <coughs> On to the Oathkeeper class. Uh, the Oathkeeper class in this case is more, more of the support class. And uh, Oathkeeper has some shield support. We have a 1 pointer and safeguard here. We have 15 points in Haven down here for shield buffs as well. Um, also, we have 15 points here um, because otherwise we would be pretty low on HP. So, even though ha Haven might not have like the best uh, value at like overcap, um, we still have to like put all the points here in Haven. Also, RF is like a, well, basically our buff here. Like usually, you would play Dervish the other way around. You like have RF as your main attack, and ABB as your like Amaras's Blade Burst as your buff. But in this case, it's like the other way around. We have RF as a buff just to get like the attack speed, elemental resistance, and increased armor and the A from current creation. And this is like all we care about. So we like use this every now and then, kind of like you would use Savagery on a Shaman. Um, but yeah, ABB is like the main attack. Also, we have like Byers Might, that's just like one pointer here, one pointer there for like movement. I'll also like to extend the range on the reduce the cooldown of the movement ability. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, presence of Virtue, really good, uh, like soft capped aura. Um, yeah, I even already talked about this. And then like one pointer rebuke, because well, why not? Like one point is pretty nice for what it gives you. Physical damage, which partly gets converted to acid, etc, etc, right? Uh, Ascension. One of the core abilities of Oathkeeper, obviously. Super good, flat absorption is really, really, really strong in the end game if you have, like, a, <clears throat> a well-rounded character that has, like, nice defenses all around. Flat absorption is one of the best defensive abilities in the game. And because of that, we max out Ascension to the hard cap. Or, like, as high as we can get it here. Um, clarity of purpose is well, kind of so so. Um, you don't like you can push it to the soft cap as we did here. You can also like leave it at a one pointer or like at any point between one pointer and soft cap. It's never worth it to overcap it, certainly not. Um, in this case, I used the soft cap because I think OA was kind of bad sometimes when you don't soft cap it. And also, I think like soft capping this was probably better than like say overcapping this or soft capping this or stuff like that, you know. So yeah, 12 out of 12 uh, clarity of purpose here, uh, one point on the Guardian, the Guardian is just there to like be there and reduce any poison resistance, so yeah, we have like a soft capped Celestial Presence here as well, you could like put some points here, put some points here, right? kind of the same thing as for Night's Chill, but then again these also like only give you 1% more resistances, right? resistance direction. Um, yeah, it's like it's it's kind of hard to say what's like really better here. Um, obviously, we take the transmitter to like have acid vitality, resistance reduction instead of physical fire, and also the exclusive path of the three, which gives us fire to acid conversion, physical to acid conversion, CDR, flat poison damage, and percent acid and poison damage, which is really really good for well any poison acid or keeper rank. And also for Vitality of Keepers, actually. Um, so yeah, that's it for the skills. Let's take a look at the Devotions here. The Devotions are... Well, kind of standard asset melee, I would say. Yugol is kind of arguable, right? You can like argue about whether or not you like, take Yugol. You could like take something else instead, like... Um, could try to maybe go for Aeons, right? Get like the... CDR for your Ascension, for example. Um, in this case, I went kind of greedy, like kind of offensive with Devotions. Maybe that's also one of the reasons why it actually died. Um, but I was thinking that, well, because we have a shield, right, we might be like better off with the offensive Devotions. But to be honest, you don't really feel the shield on this character because the shield is pretty offensive, and also we don't really take like any defensive Devotions here for the shield. You could probably make this character a lot more defensive by like taking Shield Maiden, Obelisk of Men here, stuff like that, right? Um, but yeah, I, I did theory craft stuff like that before, but mm, I don't know. I didn't really like it that much either. So either way, this is what I use now, and this is what I use to kill Lokar. Uh, I also cleared Shell Ram 35 to 36 only. I didn't try higher because 
Well, I tried to kill Captain Bourbon as well, and I kind of misplayed, slash the build was too bad, and uh, yeah, I died to Bourbon. As you might see in another clip, and also you will probably see the death in this video as well, later on. Um, but yeah, let's take about talk about the Devotions here. Um, we got the Scorpions thing, really good tier 1 Devotion, also reduces enemy DA. It's one of the reasons why we don't have to use Crushing Verdict, otherwise we would probably have to use this. Um, Spider is really good now, tier 1 devotion with attack speed now, ever since the buff, really good. Um, Red is like pretty decent for poison asset overall. Um, it's mostly for affinity though. Hawk, uh, well, it's better than Candle, or like Scholar's Light later on. If you can afford like getting one less affinity point, right? A must have is Murmur. Murmur gives you the poison and acid resistance reduction on the skill here. We bound this to the Guardians, so that it's like easy, easily procced all the time. Um, well, Ghoulish Hunger, kinda, kind of a must-have on like all weapon damage based melee characters nowadays. That's like really strong. I mean, it did get nerfed at one point a little bit, but it's still super good. And like stuff like, I don't know, Tip the Scales and Dryad's Blessing, they still are like far away from Ghoul when it comes to effectiveness right now. Uh, Revenant though, Revenant is really, really strong. Revenant is also the reason why we are not using Manticore anymore, even though this is a acid slash poison character. I think Manticore really is only good for poison casters now. It's like literally bad for everything else except for poison casters. Like even poison acid melee character are just gonna go for raising the, the dead because of this like attack speed, casting speed, lifesteal here. It's so good. And, uh, yeah, we also got the Jackal here, to get, like, the 8 red affinities, right? You could take out the Jackal, get Ghoul, like, put the points in Ghoul, right? And, um, like, do with these two points whatever you would like to. That's a possibility. Um, but to be honest, I didn't, like, think, I uh, if I find anything better to, to take than Jackal. Because Jackal gives us, again, 6% total speed, which is also attack speed, and 2% physical resistance, which is also pretty nice. Um, but yeah, like the big tier 3s are Abomination, right? Poison Acid, Offensive Ability, HP, and then a really nice uh, proc here, which has like perfect synergy with Ring of Steel in my opinion. So yeah, really good tier 3 devotion. And then we also use Yugol, which is, well, I think they should buff Yugol a little bit, to be honest. But this node here right here is really good still. This is like, what, another 6% life steal. 5 Acid, 5 Cold, Flat. Um, Yugo would be even better for this build if he had more Cold to Acid conversion. And, uh, but yeah, Yugo is kinda... like You can't really use it in a Cold build, right? Like Affinity requirements are way better for Acid builds because it's like really similar to Abomination. Whereas Cold goes for, you know, like Ultos, uh, Dying God, uh, Arrowglass combination, or like... I don't know, Kovac, Amatok, or some Leviathan stuff, right? And like getting 20 greens is like not something that cold builds really want to go for, right? So Yugol is usually never used by uh, cold builds. Whereas, uh, yeah, acid builds can just go for it anyways. <clears throat> also, last but not least, um, Ozone's Torch is also like really, really good actually for acid bolts. Even though this is like usually a fire devotion, um, even the proc can be good. Like if I had two more, I mean, yeah, we could also actually like take the proc here, right? Um, like you can take out the jack around, right? you can take the ghoul here, and then take the proc here. Um, this is also pretty nice because we actually convert like lots of fire to acid. It's even better if you have like 100% fire to acid conversion, which we don't have, I believe. But which you could get from a belt. If you use like another belt, you could get that as well. Um, mainly again because of affinity requirements, right? Because like whenever you have abom abomination, you automatically also unlocked Orzin's Torch, right? So 
because of that, you can always get the first three notes here, and they're like universally good. Like the first note, not so, not so much, it's only 20 OA. Uh, the second though is like 5% OA, which is really good, and 15% Chaos Resistance, which is also really good. And then this one, 5% Crit Damage, and 5% Movement Speed, which again is really good. So these three nodes are like, you can take them on any build that goes for this, like 15 green 8 rats. And usually all the Poison slash Acid builds do that because of abomination. So yeah, it's really good. So in the end, let's also talk about the gear. Um, we have the Amrostan Crusher, which is like the main part of this build when it comes to gear, right? This is the one that enables the build, the weapon that enables the build. This will make Amorassal Big Burst be your spammable skill. And the Oculant is like the shield that we choose to use together with that because it has the highest flat acid damage. Um, now when it comes to other stuff, like obviously we also want Card of the Venom Blade, the mythical one, which as this one converts all the cold damage on ABB to acid. So now we have like pure acid, spammable, and Russell's shield burst, I should say, right? And um, then like the two piece is pretty nice to have. Like th there aren't like any better chests anyway for acid builds, honestly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. And also you get like a two piece set bonus, right? Uh, 120 acid damage on top, pretty nice. Um, these Pants are actually only used to like max out ABB and lethal assault, um, plus two to each from these pants. Otherwise, they're like they're like so so. They're okay. There are there are certainly better pants out there, but uh, for this build, they're kind of perfect. Um, also, we have the pack of deadly means, which sadly has a dual wield only bonus of four percent OA. If we had this as well, maybe the build would be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, still like the best acid build out there for this build, unless we want to like use um, <clears throat> the Ozan's Torch Devotion, right? Then we could also use a very nice alternative as well, would be the Myth Mythical Murmur's Curse, right? This converts also to fire to acid, allowing you, for example, to use the Ozan's Torch proc as well, and also Aether to acid conversion, which that doesn't matter, but also gives us more attack speed. We would lose plus one Oath Keeper. Um, so we would kind of like lose some of these points. I guess that would be kind of fine. Um, we would lose 1% CDR here on the path of the 3 though. And like 2% more conversion would be lost here. But we would be at 100% conversion anyways with like a good roll on the belt. And probably would have to like sacrifice some of the points from Clarity of Purpose. But that's kind of fine actually. The other belt would be just as good or maybe even better than this. I didn't really have the time to test it around. Because, well, the character died too early. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, like, this build is good, and the other build I just showed you as well. The um, Murmur's Kiss is also really good for this build. Uh, for the metal, we chose Mark of Lethal Intense. Mostly, again, because of Lethal Assault bonus, but you can also go for um, the Pneumatic Burst uh, metal, right? Because this one... Well, it gives you more cold damage to Pneumatic Burst, right? But this cold damage will be applied to ABB, and on ABB it will get converted to Acid, so basically you have like 20 more Acid damage on, from like Weapon damage, because of this. So, yeah, like, it might be better than this, but then again, I believe you're gonna lose like plus 3 Lethal Assault, yeah, exactly. And also we would have Cold Resistance instead of Vitality Resistance, and that would actually not be a problem, but... Just keep in mind that there are like other metals that you can use here, like Undying Oath, for example. You could use that, like try that event eventually. Um, but in this case, I use this to max out Lethal Assault. If you have like another way to max it out because of, I don't know, like rings or pants, for example, then you can go for, um, yeah, like Mythical Undying Oath instead. Uh, speaking about rings, uh, we are using Double Widow Sting here, which are craftable and you can get like percent armor on top of these. Um, but they are not like the very best. Uh, I just don't have like a good Viloth ring. Like the Viloth ring, with, like GG affixes, is like the best one for any asset dervish for pretty much, well, for pretty obvious reasons, right? Like the base is already really good. You're like plus one more to ABB and plus two to path of a three on top. And like higher base asset 
Um, you can you just need like attack speed roll and elemental resistance roll on this, and it's already better than this. And you can get like I don't know some crazy FXs here on the leaf reader ring, right? You can get like so many FXs here. <clears throat> so if you have like a better Velo ring, use that instead of Widow Sting. But if you don't, Widow Sting is a nice, uh, it's a good item. Let's see. A good craftable ring, and because it's craftable, you can get DA or armor or CC resistance on those, right? Pretty good. Um, the amulet, Pestilence of the Rig. This is what you have to be a little bit careful because this one is kind of like a conduit. Like, it doesn't really say it's a conduit, but it is kind of like a conduit, and it can roll different prefixes. And you want to have a, a prefix that has no acid to something. Conversion usually like acid to vitality, I believe it's it has, um, because that will like fuck up your damage, right? So you want always to have something to acid conversion on this one, or like no conversion at all. I don't even know if that exists on this one actually, but you definitely don't want like any acid to something else conversion, right? In this case, I got the one that's like the the plague of rot, basically, plague of rot one. Uh, we're also actually using this Plague of Rot down here as like an additional debuff, which, well, it re does reduce enemy acid and poison resistance by another 10% on top. So that's pretty nice. Um, so yeah, no reason to not use this. <clears throat> also, I'm using Red Against Mantle here on my shoulder piece. Um, this as well, kind of because, well, Xanteran shoulders would be better if you have like Pretty nice one. I like a pretty nice one here. I have like plus three lethal assault, plus three ascension. But I didn't have like a Centarians of Kings or something like that that has like CC resistance on, on top. And this one has pretty nice resistances actually. It has Aether resistance, which was really important for this build. It has CC resistance, which was also really important for this build. As you can see, without ascension, we are 52, 58 without ascension. That's like Pretty okay, but like it would be 30% only without Red again, right? That would be terrible. Um, also, Elemental was really crucial as well, as you can see. Like, uh, Elemental is only higher than 4% over cap whenever we have the well, um, Pneumatic Burst and Consecration buff up, right? So, we're very tight on Elemental resistances here as well. So, yeah, this is not ideal, but it did like. Fit this build pretty nicely because I didn't have like better than Terran's shoulders. But yeah, again, if you have like Zantaran's shoulders, then you can also swap out this model to Undying Oath, for example. Onto the gloves. The gloves are mythical ice scorn talents in this case because this will give us additional crit damage to ABB. No other glove does that. And also it has pretty nice base of like average 16 attack speed. Really good as well. We don't really care about the RF part, but yeah. Very good. Also, the frostburn will get converted to acid again. Um, there's these are like just best in slot. There's no better item, like but no better alternative, I believe. Uh, Thunderstruck of corrosion. No. Um, well, <laughs> these are like some boots that I had crafted, obviously. Um, again, I use them for elemental aether and stun reduction, like stun resistance, elemental resistance, and aether resistance. And also for pierce resistance, actually, like in game, my pierce was at eighty percent. Barely. Um, here in Grim Tools with average values is actually at 74%. In game, I had like some higher rolls on Pierce, so it was at 80% in game. But yeah, you can already see that because of this like piece of boot here, um, it's not that easy to make this well meme build work at all, right? Um, <clears throat> also, we have Black Tallow. As a component on the metal to fix chaos resistance, which is also not like something I would usually do because black tallow is, I mean, it's, it's good, but it's on average it's worse than, say, tainted heart, right? Also, we are using double seal of might actually to also further fix resistance problems like pierce, bleed, vitality. Um, I could probably use like one seal of blaze actually, or could have used, but oh well. Also, we have Seal of Annihilation and the Amulet, which is, as always, best in slot on any not pet, not pet, non pet build. So it gives us, again, like attack speed, spirit. Also, skill energy cost is really good for this build, actually, because spamming and restless blade burst does need quite some energy. 
Also, we are using the Meditation Relic here. I was originally going for Absolution Relic in the end. Um, I don't... Well, meditation was also really good. Meditation gives you like more flat asset stuff, right? That's really good. Um, Absolution should be pretty good as well. Because we are using a shield. That would have probably made me a little bit tankier, right? Uh, I would lose attack speed though. Um, but yeah, I didn't have the chance to try this out actually. I mean, okay, that's also at attack speed, right? It would be pretty good, probably. Like, Absolution is probably better. Um, I was off flat SL during Absolution, actually. Yeah, like, Absolution should definitely be better than Meditation on this build, but again, I didn't really have the chance to try it out. But yeah, if you have the chance, or like, if you want to play this build, feel free to try it out with Absolution instead. It should be the better relic here. Like, even though we lose some poison, resistance, which again, I like, guess not that nice, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's still better than meditation. Also, augments on the rings are irrash. Like, I had even like one irrash patience here, as you can see, which is generally not the best augment, but I just needed it to, to have like decent HP. Uh, also, like, double Ravager's Eye probably here, yeah, like, on weapon and shield, right? And, uh, some, like, Mankind's Vigil here to fix Aether and Chaos Resistance overall. And also we have, like, a Chaos Strike ability, actually. I like this the most on the Dervish because it is better than Shadow Strike. It doesn't require me to put points in Shadow Strike. It reduces enemy damage. We don't have a source for that yet. And uh, also, I can just always use Wire Smite as an usual, like a normal disengage, right? So I was using Chaos Strike as my engage, as you can see here, and Wire Smite as my disengage. All right. Um, I also want to show you some clips of this character while he lived um, to show you some highlights, like for example, local kill, etc., etc. You can also find um, some of the highlights or like complete videos of the highlights um, in my YouTube here as well. There will be like a full SR 35-36 to 36 run, for example, uh, the full bourbon fight and the full local fight. Ah, that's not that easy. <laughs> The Union Kill Time is actually pretty okay. Like, stage 1 at least. But I mean, then again, stage 1 is kinda Omega low. Why not? Why do they have stars now? Why do they like... Wait, do they always spawn like this? Is, is, is this like a new patch or something? Still managed to put his like annoying Aether Fire up. It's kind of his. Okay. That was kind of terrible, but he dies anyways because of poison. I actually have quite some decent poison damage from this guy. It's pretty good. This is a meme build, and this is a rather scary enemy, at least for a campaign. Easy clap. <laughs> yeah, he is kind of scary. Doom, 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 doom. Just want to make sure in stage one that you don't get hit by those meteors. <clears throat>
The long animation times are really good for Earthkeepers because you can like wait for your ascension during his animation times. It's really nice. Yeah, now we have like no ascension anymore, and we kind of want to wait for it. There we go. Yeah. I fucked up my ascension actually here. It's running out soonish. Combos was like no problem at all, what the hell? Um, but usually like the goal for your very first, he has no word either by the way, with the hands. Usually like the the goal for your very first character should be to... Sorry, you gotta like kill this guy first. He's like a little bit scary sometimes. <laughs> there we go. against this guy here. Mighty of the Wolf. Mighty is uh, physique, right? And of the Wolf is cunning and physique, I believe. Like Mighty is. Oh, Mythical Crimson Lotus, finally, you know? So, yeah, if you wanna, like, get some more goodies and support the developers a bit. Alright, oh, that's gonna be annoying. Fumble, 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 right? Because AVB can actually fumble. Is, right? Yo, Circle of Life, how are you, man? Welcome, welcome. Good evening, sir. The Singer of the Fallen is pretty easy to get, I think. Like, you get it from like so many quests as a reward. Right. We wanna try to save Ascension for Sage 2 if we can. I'm not sure if we can though. Oh shit, Ghoul Proc, yeah. <laughs> This is kinda bad, like I kinda wish I had Ghoul for this stage now. Um, this is so bad actually. Yeah, I think I have to like wait for at least Resilience to come up again. I'm gonna risk anything here. I'm gonna like make him spawn second Volcanoes again, right? Uh, hello, spawn Volcanoes, dude. Here we go, ghoul active again. Shit, Gurgle boss. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this build is squishy. Low armor. Kinda low physical resistance. We have a shield, but yeah. <laughs> Not really. I 
I could have played stage 2 way more aggressive if he didn't like proc my good on stage 1. But since he did, we have to like be a little bit more careful here. Was most lucky? No, right? Okay, we're fine. But if we have like Tear Gun, the Mad Priest, or whatever he's called, no, we also don't have him, right? We're fine. This is Bane Gargoth even. Uh, this build is kind of good against Reaper actually because like the Wendigos that he spawns, those are the guys that deal like I don't have the resistance reduction aura, right? But our ABB has so much AoE that they just die instantly. Okay, what do we have here? Oh. A dinosaur! A watcher. And something that doesn't move, like... Oh, no, he's actually a scary guy. The Chthonian here is definitely the scariest guy out of all the four, like, out of all these three guys. Kinda wanna kill this T-Rex before I start killing the zombie, uh, like, the Chthonian, or at least the watcher. Like, be sure it's safe. Uh, he should die now. Okay. All right, that's our thirty six down. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna go higher on this character, like, maybe if I had a whole frost, I could do it. Uh, but I wanna do, like, low card first, and, like, maybe bourbon clones. You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a super save. And also this one, probably, and this one. Like, I'm gonna use all the raw jealous here, these are really cheap. Alexia with Rangul and the one against fire resistance. I have four fire resistance because we're kinda low on that. I uh, should maybe also use the lightning one, why not? Also, he has a hammer, Monk has. Please, no hammers. Dude, without ascension, it's like... Oh, Good actually procced. I'm so fucked. Anyways, we got ascension back up. We are in ascended Saiyan again. I lost it here a bit. Ascension back up. I guess Ghoul should be back up again soon as well. Not gonna, like Prismatic Diamond is up now as well. But I mean, yeah. There we go. Like, kill speed wasn't that terrible, actually, compared to some other boats. Let's say. But, like, yeah, it's obviously not the tankiest build. Oh. I mean, this was obviously not the fight, but <laughs> here we go. Let's 
guys are so annoying with their like maven spheres. <laughs> Got the elemental clones, right? Tainted one. Get corrupted once. Okay, and I guess this spell is not good enough for this uh, fight. Oh shit, okay, I didn't expect that. Ah, uh, but okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is like a, a harder fight than Lokar, as you could see. Oh well. Didn't think this would end like that, but oh uh, well. <laughs> I got wrecked there. Oh so yeah, this is the short but sad story of Amrasta the Shield Burst Stress. I hope you guys liked this video. And uh, if you wanna play this build as well, try it in softcore, don't try it in hardcore, it's not that good for hardcore, at least not right now. And uh, also you can like choose another relic, choose another belt, there should be some better options maybe than what I've used. Especially for the relic, I think Absolution is a better one. Uh, I wanted to use it, but yeah, I didn't really have the time to switch it around. And um, But yeah, the build was a lot of fun. Um, it was actually surprisingly viable for most content. I think actually like the build could kill Bourbon as well. I mostly misplayed there, but it's like nevertheless it's gonna be a hard fight. And uh, any like higher SR pushing is also not viable on this character obviously. It is a meme build after all, um, but it was a pretty nice meme in my opinion. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video and I would be very grateful if you gave it a like or if you have any questions, uh, write them into the comments down below and also subscribe if you feel like you like my content and I hope to see you guys in the next one.